Hey guys, so let's discuss the problem of a car moving on a flat circular track. So you have a circular track in this problem. And the car, let's say this car is moving on the circular track. Okay. Now let's, uh, uh, we're going to assume that it's moving with constant speed. Magnitude of the speed, let's say it's constant. So it's uniform circular motion. The velocity, of course, changes direction, okay? And at every point, uh, velocity changes direction, okay? But its magnitude remains constant. Now, since the car is in a circular path, there is uh, obviously a force that's keeping it in that circular path, okay? Uh, that's the centripetal force. But remember, centripetal force is not uh, a new force. It's not a new type of force. It's, the gener it's a generic name for any force. So any force can be centripetal force, like uh, tension, normal force, even gravity. So when satellites uh, rotate around the planet, gravity is the centripetal force. Normal force can be centripetal force or a combination of components of these forces can be centripetal force. So in this case, what do you guys think? What is the centripetal force? So when the car moves on the circular, even when you take a turn, when you're turning uh, around a corner, uh, there is a force between uh, your tires and the road that enable you to make that turn. So in, that, in this case and in, that, in any case where you take a turn, uh, static frictional force is the centripetal force, okay? Now let's look at the free body diagram. Let's look at the front view of the car. So here's the front view. Uh, normal force is in the upward direction and weight is down and the force towards the central uh, center is uh, static frictional force. Now, when these questions are posed in books uh, or in problems, you're typically asked to find the maximum speed of the car, the maximum speed so that the car can safely go around the, uh, around the circular track. So there is, of course, you know intuitively that if you turn around a corner really fast, your car can slip out of the track, right? So what is that limiting speed uh, with which you can take that turn without slipping? So if you go really slowly, right? There's a static frictional force, but remember the static frictional force is a variable force, right? Static frictional force is usually less than equal to mu s times n. So if you go really slow, then static frictional force will be really small. If you go really fast, then you will uh, uh, you will start uh, you will uh, you can reach the maximum value of this. And if you go beyond that, you will slip. Your car will skid out of the uh, track. So in order to find the limiting speed, we will uh, take the static frictional force to be maximum. Okay, uh, for say Vmax, okay? Now, um, so the static frictional force is equal to mu s times n, its maximum value is equal to mu s times n, so you get mu s times n equals mv square over r. r is the radius of the track. Now, um, normal force is equal to the weight of the the net force in the y direction is zero okay so the net force in the y direction is zero so you get uh, n equals w so n is equal to mg so that's your that's your normal force so now we can plug the normal force equal mg over here so you get mu s times mg equals mv square or r the mass cancels out, so you get V square, V equals square root of mu s times R times G. So that's your maximum speed uh, of the car. If the car uh, goes around the circular track with a speed greater than this, uh, the car will slip out of the track. And interestingly, so it doesn't matter if it's a small car like this, if it's a big car, uh, or if it's a bike, it's independent of the mass of the of the car uh, of the car or the or the object okay now um just uh, just one thing intuitively remember that the, at every point this force uh the, the the direction of velocity is along the tangent okay 
If you let, if you turn off friction, the car uh, will fly off in the tangential direction. According to Newton's second law, every object moves in the straight path unless a force changes that, right? If there's no force acting on the object, the object will move in the straight path. So the net, so at every point, this force is pulling the car towards the center. And in this case, uh, the static frictional force is the centripetal force that's keeping this car in the circular path. And again, remember, we want the limiting speed. For the limiting speed, you want the static frictional force to be maximum. Uh, so, <clears throat> and interestingly, the result is independent of the mass of the car. So this was it for the car on a flat circular track. Uh, the, oh, and just one more thing. This is also called unbanked, something that you'll see in books. Okay. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. Thank you for watching.